Hello and welcome back to Inside the 20 um, for the week 7 recap. If you have not checked out my week 1 through uh, 6 recap, please go check those out um, on my YouTube. And also check out my Instagram reels and my Spotify. Uh, so let's go into it. Alright, so for week seven, you had a ton, ton of injuries. You had Deshaun Watson, his Achilles. Playing the Bengals. Mike Evans playing the Ravens. Hamstring. Undergoing assessments. Then you have his teammate, buddy, Chris Godwin. Out for the season with dislocated ankle. Jaden Daniels. His rib ch- slash chest injury. He's going to go week by week. Brandon Ayuk. Done for the season. ACL MCL tear. And then finally you have DK Metcalf. Week to week with MCL sprain. So a lot of injuries. Obviously, hope they get better. Hope they can you know improve and get back out there and play for their team. Going to London. And the next week we have a Germany game. Jaguars win. 32-16. The Jaguars bounce back. They were down 10-0, and they defeat the Patriots 32-16. Tanks Bigsby ran for 116 yards and two touchdowns in the win. So that's good. Definitely good. You know, you have Travis Etienne that's out, and you have that man stepping up. That's really good. Parker Washington's 96-yard punt return really led the way. The problem is they have a really tough challenge. They have to face the Packers next week. They are, the Packers are a very good football team. And the Jaguars, they're not winning the game. They had to play the Patriots. You know, they're not a hard opponent. Doug Peterson is on the high seat. Not looking good. He's done. But yeah, they have a tough schedule coming up. They're not beating the Packers. But good win for the Jaguars. For the Patriots, Drake May had a good game despite the loss. 26 of 37 on his passes for 276, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. However, he also recorded three turnover-worthy plays and had five passes broken up by Jaguars defenders. So, you know, we saw the big bomb last week, and then he did it again this week. But he just needs a, his placement. His placement needs to be better. You know, 26 to 37, that's pretty good. 276, 276, no picks. But, yeah, I mean, going to Atlanta, Seahawks 34, Falcons 14. The Seahawks ended a three-game losing streak with Geno Smith nodding at the extra time to reset was beneficial. But it was a cost. Seattle star receiver DK Metcalf left with an injury, um, though it's expected to be minor, and he will be back. So that's definitely good, you know, take a breath for Seahawks fans, knowing that he's going to be back. For the Falcons, uh, Michael Penix Jr. made his rookie debut after Kirk Cousins threw three interceptions. And Atlanta also has some solid pressure on Geno Smith. And then Bichon also had a great game. He rushed for over 100 yards and a tutty, and he also had 30 yards through the air. So really good there. Good job, Bijan. Clap it up for Bijan. Going to Buffalo. Buffalo 34, Tennessee 10. In Josh Allen's 100th career game, the Bills overcame a 10-0 deficit to score 34 unanswered points and win 34-10. to Newly acquired receiver, Mark Cooper, definitely made an impact. He had four catches for 66 yards and a touchdown, creating a pick-your-poison thing um, for defenses. So that's definitely going to be a problem to cover, you know, Bills, they were already looking solid, and then you go out and get him. It's a new ball game. For the Tennessee Titans, Mason Rudolph could have had a better game, finishing 25 of 40 for 215, a touchdown, and an interception. Tennessee also has a 1 in 5, which is their worst start since 2015. That's a decade. That's a decade ago. It's kind of wild. Um, but yeah, Tennessee, they're going to have to turn something around. You can't be 1 in 5 here, especially, you know, you're in such a solid division with Texans leading it right now, and then right behind you, we have the Colts. And they're definitely going to need to. Um, step things up, and they can't be, you know, sitting here being, oh, well, we keep losing, and, you know, we have no hope. Like, you're going to have to start winning games if you're going to turn the season around. Going to Cleveland, Bengals 21, round 14. The Bengals secure a win. Burrow's first in Cleveland, and Jamar's first. And for the second straight week, the Bengals' defense was dominant. Another great win, another great game. Um, for the Cincinnati Bengals. And Charlie Jones got things going right away. A 100-yard kick return to start the game. And when he took that back, I was saying, oh, it's going to be a long day. And nobody scored until less than a minute left in the second quarter. Uh, it was kind of freaking crazy. And then Dustin Hopkins, dude. I think that was his name for the Browns. He missed a PAT on their only touchdown in the second quarter. Congrats to Nick Chubb, by the way, for getting his first touchdown in like 400 days. And then also, he missed a field goal. A 49-yard field goal he missed um, in the second quarter, so we have to clean that up. The Bengals' win, however, was marred by Deshaun Watson's likely season-ending Achilles injury.
for the Browns. Um, three Thompson Robinson replaced Watson, and Thompson Robinson did not do good. He threw two picks, and they got benched for Jameis Winston, who they said earlier after Watson's injury, they were like his last resort type thing. So, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of crazy that you get benched for that dude. Um, but the Browns definitely turn it around. They have uh, Baltimore next week. Hopefully they can beat Baltimore. So... The Bengals can move up. Also for the Browns, Watson faced boos from the home crowd um, at the start of the game, and cheers could be heard when he went down with injury. This is really sad to see. I mean, regardless, with all the off-the-field stuff, but dude, you cannot be doing that. Browns fans, you can't be doing that. Whether he's incredible or he's horrible, it doesn't matter. You can't be doing that. Like, that's, that's horrible. That's stupid. They should be ashamed of themselves. You should not be doing that. Going to Green Bay, Packers 24, Texans 22. For the Packers, Jordan Love completed 25 of his 34 passing attempts for 224 and three touchdowns. But the offense was far from perfect. He also threw two picks and two, and also had two costly p- passes dropped by his receivers. Um, and also, in his season debut with the Packers, he was just signed on Wednesday. Kicker Brandon McManus hit a 45 yard game winning field goal to beat the Houston Texans. The Packers held Texans quarterback CJ Stroud to just 86 passing yards and overcame. A minus three turnover differential. Josh Jacobs scoring his first ever uh, receiving touchdown, which gave them a 21-19 lead, followed by Houston's three points, followed by Green Bay's three points to win it. For Houston, um, Houston struggled um, offensively with less than a 40% QBR for uh, Mr. Stroud. Um, He also threw for less than 100 yards. On the other hand, Mixon had a great game. He had two touchdowns and over 100 yards rushing. So, you know, there's two things to that. I mean, the defense did okay. Mixon did great, but Stroud did not, and I think that's what it comes down to at this point. You know, it's always good to have the running game going, but that should be the point where you should be versatile in the passing game, and you can't lean on that. But just one bad game, Stroud will get it. He's good. Heading to Indianapolis. Indianapolis, Indiana, Colts 16, Dolphins 10. The Dolphins expect to welcome back Tua after falling to 2-4, and four, struggling against the Colts despite being a one-score game. With Tyree Kill and Waddle combining for just 19 yards, Miami's offense needs to improve quickly. And with Tyler Huntley out to injury, Boyle was not the dude. Um, the Dolphins missed a key field goal, which would have put them down by three. Actually, would have put them up by three. Would have made the score 13-10. They dunked it off the post, and it didn't go in. Um, obviously, the Texans jumped down and scored, and the Dolphins had no answer. For the Colts. The offense struggled. Six drives, they went three and out in the third quarter, and both fourth down drives ended in field goals. On third down plays, Richardson was one of seven for 10 yards and a first down. He also had four carries for 33 yards and a first down on three third down plays. Going to Minnesota, Vikings fall to five and one. Lions win 31-29. The Lions take down the undefeated Vikings with Jake Bates' 44-yard field goal with 15 seconds left in the game. Jared Goff's historic run continues, making him the fourth quarterback in NFL history with an 140% QBR through three games in a row. Gibbs had a great game as well, 160 scrimmage yards and two touchdowns. For the Vikings, despite a late lead, the Vikings faltered on a critical third and four, allowing the Lions to seize victory. Now Minnesota must quickly regroup for a short week as they have Thursday night game against the Rams. Going to New York, Saquon's revenge game. Saquon silenced the booze from Giants fans in his return by delivering a dominant performance, rushing for 176 yards against his former team. The Eagles secured back-to-back wins for the first time since last December, but they need to improve their passing game. They have not scored a single point in the first quarter of the entire season. They face tough matchups, including the Bengals, Ravens, and Cowboys while they're still seeking first place in their division. And going to New York, the Giants had a difficulty establishing um, a consistent rhythm as they have all season. The Eagles team has applied pressure, making it hard for the Giants to complete passes and get the ball off. Going to Washington, Commanders 40, Panthers 7. Rookie sensation quarterback Jaden Daniels left the game as the first possession with a chest injury, uh, went to the locker room, and came back in the second half in street clothes. His mom posted on Twitter, he's good, so hopefully he can get back out there and continue to play with his boys. Marcus Mariota stepped up, finished the game 18 of 23, 205, two touchdowns and no interceptions. For the Panthers, while the Commanders are in contention, the Panthers are not far from contention, facing overwhelming chaos and concern under owner David Temper. The Panthers are struggling significantly, unable to compete even under an injured Commanders team. They are still not able to produce. Going to Inglewood, Raiders. 15, Rams 20. So Rams get the W. 
Rams secured a narrow five-point win over the neighbor Las Vegas Raiders, but it wasn't a convincing win, and they were outgained by nearly 60 yards. With a subpar performance from Matthew Stafford and a tough matchup against the 5-1 and one Vikings ahead, the Rams are needing, needing to get things going very quickly. For the Raiders, the defense played a crucial role, limiting the Rams' offensive production heavily. The Raiders were able to execute enough on offense to score points, but they faced challenges in the red zone with a lot of field goals instead of touchdowns. In difficult situations, the performance of the quarterbacks were a key factor. The Raiders' quarterbacks made crucial plays at key moments, and the Rams struggled to find condition. Con- consistency. The Rams struggle to find consistency. My English is not Englishing. Going to Santa Clara, the Super Bowl rematch. Chiefs versus 49ers. Chiefs 28, 49ers 18. The Chiefs are winning games with a strong defense, and st- but a very struggling offense. Starting the season with six consecutive victories, they are the only NFL team to still be undefeated. Thanks in part to Patrick Mahomes' ability to make big plays with help from his buddies a.k.a. the NFL refs. For San Francisco, the 49ers, plagued by injury, inconsistent plays from the young quarterback, needs to start winning quickly. Quickly. They are 3-4. and four. They are third in the NFC West. I checked the standings today. I saw Seattle's name at the top, and I was so confused. And then I looked down, and the 49ers are way down here. And I almost flipped out. I was confused, dude. I was like, what is going on right now? I knew they weren't winning, but I didn't know it was this bad. They lost Brandon Ayuk after a hard hit in the second quarter, and Debo was a no-go with an illness. Rookie wide receiver Ricky Purcell got his first NFL action after being on IR following being shot this summer. Ricky Purcell had a solid performance, four receptions for 66 yards, and scored a touchdown. His contributions were significant in the game. Even though they lost, he still made it a competitive matchup. For the final game, the Sunday Night Football Steelers versus Jets, the Steelers, 37, Jets, 15. Mike Tomlin's decision to start Russell Wilson paid off, and the Steelers rallied from a 15-6 deficit to score 31 unanswered points. With the Steelers' trademark tough defense, timely offensive plays, and a crucial blocked field goal, the Steelers provided efficiency, which was definitely key in their win. Finally, for the Jets, Aaron Rodgers continued his streak of throwing for less than 300 yards in the game with 276. He completed 24 of his 39 passes for one touchdown, but threw two costly picks. Adams didn't have a great game either, with three catches on nine targets for a measly 30 yards. So, that will wrap up my week seven recap. Once again, please go check out my Instagram. I have reels there. And also check out my Spotify. I have my previous podcast link there as well. So, thank you for watching. You're awesome because you just watched through the entire video. So, thank you for that. Please share this to anybody you know. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And yeah, have a great day. Thank you for tuning in to Inside the 20.